Right, so next up here, we're going to restore a Les Paul standard. This is a beautiful flame top with a Brazilian rosewood fretboard, but it was glued on or replaced with hide glue. And so there's a bunch of errors all over the guitar and it needs to be cleaned up and replaced. I bought this from Gibson Dependable and it was definitely beat up much more so than what the auction had stated. It's got a beautiful flame maple top, lots of figure. But there's lots of issues with this guitar. You can see the checking all over the place, multiple holes drilled everywhere, and just kind of looking weird. So I think the guy pulled the fretboard out and actually tried to replace it with different glue. Definitely a Gibson guitar, but you can see all the issues. Looks like the glue was just all messed with. So first things first here, we're actually going to pull the frets out. And I've got my soldering iron and my fret pullers. These are my custom made fret nippers. I actually grinded these down myself. What I'm doing is heating up each fret, you know, releasing the glue and slowly pulling these out. So what I do is I take my fret pullers and just slowly kind of wiggle underneath the fret as I heat it up and pull out any of the glue that's been used to seal the fret. So this is definitely, you know, a back and forth process, kind of wiggling it out, heating it up, making sure you're not getting any chipping. And here I'm just going back and forth and trying to get those ends of the fret nipper underneath the fret to pull it up. And here you can see I'm slowly starting to pull it out making sure I don't get any chip outs. And that this actually looks pretty good, no chipping. We'll go to the second fret here. Same process. We'll speed up the video a little bit. You're just gonna wiggle it out, essentially. You just heat it up and use the ends to kind of tug it out. Here I'm actually going to cut the nib, and I thought about keeping these at first, but I realized that this binding is just really messed up beyond any saving grace. So here I'm going to heat it up, cut it out, and pull it up. So you really start with the end of the fret nipper and just wiggle it in and get it to pull it up. And as long as you go slow and let the fret heat up properly, it's pretty easy to pull out. These Stumac fret chippers essentially help really reduce the chipping. You know, the first couple of frets worked out really well, and then the last one chipped out at the edge. And what these do is really reduce the amount of chipping. There's two different sizes. There's a .02 and a .01. And really just a great tool to help pull frets out. Really reduces the chipping significantly. So I'm going to continue to pull the frets out here and go fret by fret, you know, using the edge of these fret clippers. And really just yank out that fret. So we're going to take that chip stopper again and push that in here and make sure we're not getting any chipping and just slowly pull that fret out after it's heated up. You just go slow and slowly pull that fret out, make sure you're not ruining the fretboard. So as you can see here, got some good pulling out, not a whole lot of chipping going on. This is how I'm holding my fret clippers, you know, one-handed with the thumb on the top and I'm able to maneuver that correctly. Next we're going to pop off the nut, get ready to take off the binding here, just going to take a 
razor and pull off the binding slowly go up the neck this binding was really loose so it just kind of pulled off only a couple of sections I really had to play with it So here we're looking pretty good. You can see how far off the fretboard is on each side. You can see from one side to the other here, it's off by a lot. This is the warming blanket then that I'm going to do and put this over the fretboard. I'm going to mask off the headstock. I'm going to take this and heat this up. Got the blanket at about a quarter maybe a little bit more and heat up the fretboard with this fret blanket heating blanket and just kind of sit here for a couple minutes see how warm it's getting and make sure that I can get this fretboard off without making a huge mess so we're going to speed the video up here this is definitely a slow back and forth process I put a pipe wrench on here to make sure that it's sitting on the fretboard correctly. And then I'm going to get a putty knife and take that putty knife and begin to kind of just push in on the outside here, you know, on the neck joint and on the top of the fretboard and just push back and forth, create little gaps here and there, make sure that I'm getting the putty knife underneath as the glue is warming up. You can see I'm making some progress here where the neck joint is. And this is a slow process and if you do this correctly the fretboard comes off pretty easily. So after about 25 minutes now I've let this sit and the fretboard is ready to pop. You know I've been going back and forth and you can see the fretboard finally pops off. This is after letting it sit for a while, and you can just take that putty knife and push it through. Came off easier in the middle than here at the nut and at the neck joint. And so you just take that putty knife and slowly push it in. At this point, with the heating blanket on for over 20 minutes, the glue is pretty loose. It just requires you to kind of work the putty knife back and forth. You want to be really careful here. I've had some friends pop their fingers with the putty knife. You just go slow here. I've got some leverage and the fretboard just pops off. So next I wanted to check the neck here and see if it's actually straight or twisted. And I've got my long 36 inch Grizzly straight edge and the neck actually seems to be in pretty good shape. So the fretboard was glued on improperly and it was causing a bunch of issues. You can see all the hide glue that was left on here. So it definitely requires a lot of scraping. What's nice about having the heating blanket is you get a little bit of water in the spray bottle. You spray it on. Take that heating blanket back on. Let it warm up the glue and you can just easily scrape it off. So I've got the water kind of all over the place here. I'm just working it in the glue. I'm going to drop that heating blanket back on. Heat up the glue and then here just scrape it off. So I'll speed up the video, get the scraper, and just take that glue right off. Lots of back and forth to get this fretboard cleaned up. Luckily this was hide glue that the guy was using. So as soon as you hit it with a little bit of water and heat, everything peels right off.
Put a little bit more water back on here. Put the heating blanket back on one more time. Let it sit for another couple minutes. Pull it back off. And here you go, cleaning off everything. I take the screwdriver here next and then clean out the holes. Here I know it's an actual Gibson guitar because they use those on the fretboard and on the neck to get the placement proper. You know, it's a production technique. So this is then the fretboard, and I'm going to do the same thing, cleaning up the fretboard. Definitely much more messy. I'm going to use the heating blanket, heat it up, spray some water, and go back and forth with different types of scraping tools and get that fretboard nice and clean. Lots of mess on the edge here. I'm just going to use a little bit of heat and a little bit of water and clean it up. Next up here we're going to clamp the fretboard down. Make sure it stays straight, that there's no bowing in it. What's nice here is you see Les Paul Standard and Bazillion rosewood board so I know it's a Gibson as well. Next up we're going to strip all the lacquer off here and clean it up. 